हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द वाइबा हाउस ऑफ एनाटॉमी टुडे वी डिस्कस द लंबर बॉडी पे बट बिफोर दैट यू जस्ट गो थ्रू आवर वन ऑफ द वीडियो द डिफरेंशिएशन ऑफ अ सर्वाइकल थोरेसिक एंड द लंबर बॉडी पे इन व्हिच वी हैव डिस्कस द पार्ट ऑफ अ टिपिकल बॉडी पे नाउ द लंबर बॉडी पे दे आर फाइव इन द नंबर आउट ऑफ द फाइव लंबर बॉडी पे द फर्स्ट फोर व्हाट for are a typical lumbar vertebrae and the fifth one is a atypical lumbar vertebrae first we will see how to identify the lumbar vertebrae the lumbar vertebrae are identified by its largest body body is the largest among the all the vertebrae the second identification point is there is a absent of a foramen transverse cerium in its transverse process which is present in the cervical vertebrae and also the absent of a costal facet for the attachment of the rib which is present in the thoracic vertebrae so this is the identification of the lumbar vertebrae now we discuss about a uh, typical lumbar vertebrae i choose one of the typical lumbar vertebrae now first body the body of the typical lumbar vertebrae is a kidney shape or a bean shape it is being wider from the side to side than the antero posterior now remember one thing about the body of a vertebrae it is an example of a modified long bone as it transmits the body weight now the height of a body is greater anteriorly than the posteriorly and this will contribute to the forward convexity of a lumbar vertebrae when they are articulated means it will form a lumbar lordosis now the second one vertebral arch the vertebral arch is formed by the posterior surface of a body the pedicle and the lamina the vertebral arch first part the pedicle is directed almost directly backward they are short and the strong they are attached to the upper part of a posterior surface of the body of a lumbar vertebra so the inferior vertebral nodes below the pedicle is deeper than the superior vertebral nodes the second the lamina the lamina are short thick and the broad they are short thick and the broad directed postero medially and two lamina meet in the midline now this vertebral arch of the two side both the side will combine to form the vertebral foramen vertebral foramen of a lumbar vertebrae is a triangular in the shape it is uh, smaller than the cervical vertebrae but the larger than the thoracic vertebrae now the next thing is a processes the first we discuss about the transverse process the transverse process is thin and tapering it is gradually tapering and directed laterally and slightly backwards now you can see one thing on the postero inferior part of a root of the transverse process here you can see the small elevation this is known as a accessory process accessory process and the anterior surface of a transverse process is marked by a ridge very much faint ridge this is the transverse process now the second is a spinous process the spinous process is directed almost direct directly backwards it is in the form of a quadrilateral plate of a ball and it is having thick posterior and the inferior border this is the spinous process of a typical lumbar vertebrae the last thing is a superior and the inferior articular process now the first thing the distance between the superior articular process is larger than the distance between the inferior articular process remember in the typical lumbar vertebrae now superior articular uh, process present the concave facet which is directed backwards and the medially backwards and the medially now in the superior articular process in the posteriorly there is a rough elevation 
this is known as a mammillary process mammillary process now the intraarticular process present a convex facet which is directed forward and laterally forward and laterally so this is a feature of a typical number uh, uh, number vertebrae 1 to 4 now we see the last atypical one now we compare and differentiate the typical uh, atypical from the typical number one so just remember the difference main difference lies in its three processes that is the transverse process spinous process and the articular processes what is the difference in the transverse process you can see the transverse process of the typical lumbar vertebrae is thin and the tapering whereas that of the atypical l5 is short thick and pyramidal in the shape okay and this is reaching up to the bone of the pedicle here it is not attached to the pedicle but it is reaching up to the pedicle and the side of the body pyramidal in the shape the transverse process very much large and the massive the second is a spinous process you can compare the spinous process of a atypical bone is a short and its tip is rounded it is not a quadrilateral okay the last one is a superior inferior articular process now the distance between the inferior articular process is equal to or larger than the distance between the superior articular process this is the three main difference by which you can identify the atypical lumbar vertebrae the other uh, features of a differentiation is the body of the l5 is a largest one then the second the pedicle are directly directed slightly lateral not directed backwards and the inferior articular facet is more directed laterally than the forward so these are the differentiating point between the atypical and the typical lumbar vertebrae now we see the attachment the first we see the common attachment body along the upper and the lower border of a anterior at the posterior surface of the body of the vertebrae provides the attachment of anterior longitudinal ligament and posterior longitudinal ligament now on the side of the anterior longitudinal ligament on the right side on the anterior lateral surface body of the upper three lumbar vertebrae provides the attachment of the right cross of the diaphragm and on the left side along the upper two lumbar vertebrae provides the attachment of the left left cross of a diaphragm now the side of the body provides the origin upper and the lower border provides the origin of a psoas major and this constricted part gives the attachment of the tendinous arch of the psoas major and the lamina provides the attachment of a ligamentum flava the spinous process provide the attachment of the supraspinous and the interspinous ligament the thoracolumbar fascia it is having three part the anterior middle and the posterior the anterior layer attached to the faint ridge on the transverse process middle layer attached to the tip of the transverse process and the posterior layer attached to the tip of the spinous process this is the attachment of the thoracolumbar fascia now the erector spinae and the multifidus muscle arises from the side of the spinous process of a lumbar vertebra deep to the posterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia now we see the applied anatomy of the lumbar vertebra the first one is a sacralization of the lumbar vertebra it is a condition in which the fifth lumbar vertebra is fused completely or incompletely with the sacral vertebra like this right and this condition uh, occur in the 5% of a normal individual and the consequences of it is it sometimes may compress the l5 nerve the second is spina bifida spina bifida is a condition in which the there is a failure of the fusion of a vertebral arch of the two half of a lumbar vertebra so 
the meninges and the spinal cord are exposed and may herniate out through this gap. This is known as a spina bifida. The third one is a spondylolisthesis. The spondylolisthesis is a condition in which the L5 vertebra may slip over the sacrum. Okay. Now, sometimes what happens? The inferior articular process, the lamina, and the spinous process of the L5 uh, become the separated from the rest of the vertebrae and the rest of the vertebrae may slip on the sloping surface of the sacrum which may stretch or the compress the lower lumbar and the sacral nerve which, which will form the sciatic nerve and this sciatic nerve uh, compression of this sciatic nerve may produce the sciatica. So this is all about lumbar thank you if you like this video like it and share with your friends and to get the regular update on the anatomy videos please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon